There we go. That looks a lot better. So besides the drawbar repair and taking this whole head apart and putting it back together, this machine actually has been sitting for a while. And before I get back into doing these parts, finishing up this, this guy looks like he's already done, but do, making more parts on here, I th thought it would be time to finally take care of my coolant back here. Because it's been sitting for a while and because second reason being the AC that I have put in, we've, uh, we've lost some coolant. I don't know if you, you can see it, it's probably too dark in there, but coolant is pretty low. And there's some floaties in there, which of course are not good. So instead of having to you know, shop vac and try and clean off you know, the top surface and keep things clean manually, I thought it was time to install this. This right here, as some of you may already know, is the next gen um, coolant skimmer. We got that magnet backing plate. You got that little ball floater guy that hooks up to the pump, which is right here. Basically a submersible pump. You just plug it right in. You got the actual, I guess, filter and mechanism here where you got the, the different uh, intake and put it back into the system, I guess, outputs, um, and a bunch of tubes. Uh, so here's a, basically a, an overview of what that is supposed to look like. You got the skimmer filter up on top, all the lines that go down to the pump, to the skimmer floater, and then the, you can see over here, this is your, your waste. And so I was playing around with it, you know, I took this and trying to figure out a good place to put it. And I'm thinking, I did was I was gonna put it back here on the back wall or on the back cabinets, but because these are electrical cabinets and actually because this is actually kind of big, um, it'd be kind of big in this area, but also just because of electronics and magnets, you know, magnets aren't aren't good for you know wires. So I figured the best place for me to put this guy. Probably right here on the back of the machine. This will all also allow me to put a, uh, hey now, calm down, uh, a bucket right here in this like kind of little dead space that I can just dump my waste into there. Also, it gets me a good, good view or good, you know, channel for, for tubes to come down. I think I might exploit these holes right here to pull my my coolant into but i don't think i'll show you guys me setting it up it'll probably be easier once i get it all set up i'll review it with you guys and just show you it in action and you know we can we can clean my my coolant together i got i, I was thinking about i was going to clean it first and then once i get all the floaties out and all the crap topping it off with uh new coolant because if you guys remember a while ago uh, I got these two guys actually for free. This is a uh, Vasco 7000. So pretty good stuff. Um, that one's completely full. This one is maybe half full ish. You can see it right there. So maybe a third full. It's actually compressed too. So anyways, let's, uh, let me get all this together. It's going to be super easy to put together, but I figured some of you football guys would probably like to see it uh, put together and uh, I'll show you guys how it came out. So taking all of 10 minutes, I got, uh, I got everything set up. Um, first thing I did was I took that magnet back backing plate and uh, I set it up, made sure it was level. I don't know if you guys can see that, pretty level. 
Um, and then took out those knobs that are on the back, put the actual like reservoir, actual mechanism here. We got the intake over here. I'm just gonna put this down. Intake is over on that side. You can see it snakes down around over here. It comes into the side of the pump. And then of course, intake from the pump comes from the skimmer, which is gonna be, you know, floating. Coming down in here, going up over here. Coolant and oil and all the, the gunk comes down into here. Shoots over here into this media oil and all the other junk, you know, kind of floats up to the top. Then good coolant comes over here, comes up here, and then dumps over here. And then falls it way, its way back down to here. So right now, my temporary solution is, uh, I don't know where I got these, but I had these super thick, huge, long zip ties and decided I'm just gonna zip tie it to here. And it's gonna flow down and just go down into the tank. What I wanna do is actually probably maybe get, maybe for, for the time being, get one of those circular magnets with like a hook on it and put it back here and kind of like hook onto here and hold this zip tie back, that way it doesn't, you know, it's it's kind of tight right now, but I don't know, I guess it, it shouldn't be too forceful coming down through here like, like a pump. It should just be kind of, I guess, flowing. But yeah, it's pretty much set up. I'm going to throw this guy into there, put that guy into there. Um, for this original or initial cleanup of the oil, you can see all the oil on top. It's been sitting for a while. I ran it for a while and didn't do anything to clean it. So shame on me. But I'm just going to plug this into the wall this time to help clean up all of this. But my end goal is to hook it into here. On your Fidel machine, you might have flood and mist taken up for these sockets. I, of course, just have the flood. But if we go over here to my cabinet, and I, I went over this before, but my machine came with that mist extractor. And that is, they stole off of here. You can see down here, these, the leads for this outlet, and of course the machine's off, so don't, I'm not going to shock myself. But uh, these leads were taken off and spliced into... You can see here the light's kind of in the way, but they're spliced into to get that guy on. So whenever this socket is live or on, that guy is always, always on. So along with that, that's actually where I want to hook into with the pump here. So I want to jump these two guys, this socket and this socket, because they're separate right now. So that way when the pump is on, which is this guy, when that's on, I want this other socket to be on. So it always filters when the pump's on. That way I don't need to have an external switch or anything else to control it. It'll just automatically be on when, when flood coolant's on and it just, you know, just, it, it, I guess it makes sense. So with that, I think, I'm out of breath for some reason. I've been running around trying to cut all these tubes. Got some, uh, got some extra, but uh, yeah, let's get set up. I'm gonna drop these guys in the tank. We're gonna plug that in. We're gonna watch this stuff uh, hopefully clean up. Watch all the crap. I also need to get, actually I might have enough tubing. Does this fit on there? Yes, it will fit on there. So my next thing is once I get this thing going, I want to add a tube, maybe two tubes, to go down to the bucket down here. But let's uh, let's see this thing work first. So give me a minute, and we'll start going. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. I hear it going. 
It was at this moment when I started questioning what I was doing. Not only because I should have been wearing gloves because of the questionable coolant, but because of the look of the coolant once things started moving around. I wondered if this would actually clean up. This concern was even more solidified, no pun intended, when it started pumping up into the skimmer and I noticed it looked dark, almost like an iced tea. After doing a bit of research, including searching forum posts, watching YouTube videos, all the usual stuff, I ended up calling my coolant rep for Blouser, which is probably the, the first thing I should have done. I found out that that iced tea look was most likely from contamination or a split of the emulsion. I also learned that using any cleaners that contain sulfur helped contribute to this breakdown. I think my use of Simple Green initially to clean the machine where coolant now resides or is in contact with it probably contributed to this. After discussing further, I decided to just do a full system clean since I already had coolant available. I also got a jug of their approved cleaner, Blazo Clean AF. This cleaner, as well as more detailed steps, are listed in Blazo's instructions. I'll post a link to that below, but for now, here is what I did. Alrighty guys, so I got everything buttoned up. I got new coolant in the tank. I got my next gen skimmer going. You can see it's trickling down here. And they're both tied together right here on the outputs for the flood and the mist. This one, of course, as I told you guys, is no longer used. 
uh, it was hacked for the the mist collector so both of these are tied together to run the pump and then the skimmer which are yeah which is down inside there I got the uh, old oil here that I need to dispose of I got those guys coming next week and then you can see also too how low it is when that's full that could probably go up to this height so it was probably about halfway um, full when I first started you know all the all the water that evaporated out of there uh, but we're all good now one thing to note too is for the Blazo clean cleaner that they have you can actually pour it directly into your sump if you're an active shop and you need to keep running it'll it'll still clean the system um, compared to the way I did it which is pumping everything out and putting new water in and cleaner and then cleaning like that uh, one other thing is that normally there's a flush after the cleaner is pumped out you put uh, water in and then cool it again and then flush and then take that out and then you put the final concentration of coolant in there talking to my rep they actually said that I, I could bypass that because the blazo clean af is also i guess coolant based and so it could just mix right into your your other coolant if there was any you know small amount still left over after you pumped everything out um, and then last thing was with the concentration of my coolant on the video, I put 10%, and really, I on the refractometer, I go to 7% because on the the coolant itself, the the refractometer factor, I think, I don't know if we can see it down here, it's 1.4. So when you go to seven, you get right at 10%. So, oh, and it, because I did all this, just to show you guys, I got a nice clean machine. I got nice clean coolant. Everything is running. Turn that off. And now I, uh, I'm ready to run some parts again. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's been a while. This whole COVID thing and work, you know, kind of delays everything. So I'm looking, really looking forward to getting back into all this. I want to finish all those parts. I want to finish that lathe that's behind that board and then I want to move on to some some other cool stuff so thanks for following along guys hope you enjoyed if it deserved it subscribe if not don't worry about it if you like this video of course click the thumbs up button and I'll see you guys in the next one